Okay, I'm going to try this out from home now. I finally got my own little dock cam. So um, uh, let's try out 8.1 number 33 and see how this goes. Uh, so 8.1 number 33, it says, In the game of roulette, a wheel consists of 38 slots numbered 0, double 0, and then 1 through 36. To play the game, a metal ball is spun around the wheel and is allowed to fall into one of the numbered slots. If the number of the slot the ball falls into matches the number you selected, you win $35. Otherwise, you lose $1. Part A asks us to construct a probability distribution for the random variable x, uh, which is the winnings of each spin. Okay. Um, so the reason this might be a little confusing to you is because this is actually uh, – so part A is actually a um, – it's like a six point, what was that? Six point, uh, six point two problem, right? This is a bi, because X would be a binomial variable, right? Either you win or you lose. A probability distribution is going to list off the possible values of X together with the probability that X takes on that value. Okay. So, uh, if you win, it says that you win $35. If you lose, it says that you lose $1. So if you lose $1, that means you earn negative $1. Okay, so those are the two possible values for x. Now we can figure out the probability corresponding to those values, right? So if x is 35, that means you won. Okay, now what's the probability that you won? Well, there are 38 slots in this game, and you only get one guess. So the probability that you win is 1 in 38. The probability that you lose then would have to be 37 out of 38, right? The ball falls into any of the other 37 slots in the, uh, on the wheel. Uh, okay. So that's part A. Part B. Part B says, determine the mean and standard deviation of the random variable x. Round your results to the nearest penny. Okay. So um, if you remember back to 6.2, right, the mean of our random variable x, and that was the same as the expected value, and uh, for a binomial variable, this is just n times p. Well, it might be easier in this case to actually just use this formula, right? Sum of all the x times p of x's. Because we don't know how many games we're going to play yet, right? <clears throat> So uh, so I guess the way that it's stated actually is, is not binomial, although it, it could be rephrased so that it is binomial. But anyway, this is the probability distribution. And there are only two possible values anyway, so it's not too difficult to just go ahead and use this formula, right? So, so the mean is the same as the expected value, right? So this would be 35 times 1 out of 38 plus negative 1 times 37 out of 38. I think you've done this problem before, actually. Uh, maybe not, but but I, I feel like I've done some roulette stuff in the past uh, with some of you. Anyway, uh, let's see what we get. Well, so, I mean, well, we could actually do this in our heads, right? This is definitely 35 out of 38. Minus 37 out of 38. Oh, you're going to lose money, right? That's, um, you know, negative 2 out of 38. You could reduce that, right? 2 out of 38 is the same as 1 19th. So you could say, okay, so this is negative 1 19th. Or if you, preferred, if you prefer a decimal, you could say 1 out of 19 is approximately... Right, that's approximately – well, actually, it wants us to go to decimals, right, because it says round your results to the nearest penny. So to the nearest penny, you're going to make negative <laughs> uh, 
zero dollars and five cents. <laughs> okay, so you're going to lose five cents every game you play. Well, I mean, not exactly, right? But in the long run, you would expect to lose five cents for every game you play. Okay, now part C says, suppose that you play the game 100 times so that n equals 100. Describe the sampling distribution of x bar, which is the mean amount 1 per game. Okay, so remember, we talked in uh, 8.1 notes about what it means to describe the sampling distribution of x bar. What they're asking you for is to describe the shape, center, and spread of the distribution. Right, so as far as the shape is concerned, you know that if your sample size is at least 30, then x bar is normally distributed. In this case, n is 100. So, uh, so we could say something like this, you know, n equals 100. That's definitely bigger than or equal to 30. So x bar is normally distributed. All right, it's bell-shaped. Uh, the center. Well, mu sub x bar, right, the mean of the sample means, is the same as the, uh, well, hold on a sec. Let me think about this. Yeah. Okay, so mu sub x bar uh, is, so the mean of the sample means is the same as the population mean. For a binomial variable, uh, the, the population mean is n times p, okay, n times p. So that n we said was 100, p, that's the probability of, uh, huh, hold on a sec, let me reread this. Suppose that you play the game 100 times so that n equals 100 to describe the sampling distribution of x bar, the mean amount 1 per game. Okay, forget this. Okay. Mu sub x bar is mu. It's supposed to, so mu sub x bar is supposed to be the mean amount that you win per game. Uh, it's the same as the population mean. So that would be, uh, we already computed that in part b. Sorry, I was about to lead you astray here. But no, we already computed this in part B, right? So it's negative 5 cents. Uh, so that's the center. The spread of the distribution is sigma sub x bar. And we said that's the same thing as the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. OK. Uh, oh, shoot. We, they, they asked us to do the standard deviation in Part B. I just never did it. <laughs> so, uh, so I never finished Part B. Well, so going back to Part B real quick, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to work out the entire thing. For one thing, I don't have enough room. But for another thing, I don't want to take a ton of time to do it. But, but remember, uh, the way that you compute the standard deviation Oh, I don't have enough room to write it. So here's the mean, right? The way that you compute the standard deviation is you compute the mean, the expected value of x squared, and then you subtract off the mean squared. All right, so this is the formula that you'll use. Uh, this is a good review of the uh, 6.1 stuff. So take a look back to back in 6.1, right, if you need help doing this for the standard deviation. Okay, but once you get your answer here, now I don't know what answer you get. L let me figure out. So let me look it up. Uh, so 33. Let me look up the answer real quick. So 8.1. Eight point one thirty three thirty 
three. <laughs> Thirty-three part B. So so once you do all this stuff, uh, you should get an answer of five dollars and seventy-six cents. Okay. So then for the standard deviation, so then uh, to finish up part C now, right, you would say, well, so the standard deviation of X bar is going to be the population standard deviation, which you computed in part B, divided by the square root of the sample size, right? So it's going to be the 576 divided by the square root of 100, okay? Whatever you get there, let's see. So 5.76 divided by uh, square root 100. Oh, we should have been able to do that in our heads, right? Anyway, well, it's not approximate, it's exact, right? This is exactly equal to uh, 0 0.576. Okay, so there's part C. Now the rest of the problems I think you can handle, right? Uh, part D says, what's the probability of being ahead after playing the game a hundred times? That is, what is the probability that the sample mean is greater than zero for n equals 100? Right? So in part D, you know that x bar is normally distributed. Okay? Uh, so you can use the normal calculator to compute that probability. You're going to use this for the mean. You're going to use this for the standard deviation. Okay? And what you're looking for in part B, D is the probability that X bar is greater than zero, right? That's the probability that you're ahead. So go to the normal calculator in StatCrunch, enter this for the mean, this for the standard deviation, look for the probability X bar is greater than zero. Part E, what's the probability of being ahead after playing the game 200 times? Okay. So again, you want to find the probability that you're ahead, right? Probability x bar is greater than zero. But this time, you're going to play the game 200 times. So the only thing that changes is this number right here. Okay, You're basically going to repeat parts C and D. Uh, you don't have to do the shape, right? You know the shape is still going to be normally distributed because n is 200, right? bigger than or equal to 30. The mean is still going to be the same as the population mean, negative 0 0.5, a 0 0.05. But the spread will change because you'll be dividing by the square root of 200 instead of the square root of 100. Okay, So that's the only thing that's going to change is, the, is what you put in for the standard deviation. Okay. Uh, part F. What's the probability of being ahead after playing the game a thousand times? Okay, same. Right? You're looking for this probability. The only thing that changes is what you put in for the standard deviation because now this number is going to be a thousand. Okay? Then part G. Compare the results in parts D and E. What lesson does this teach you? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let's think about this real quick. Uh, parts D and E. So it says to compare the results in parts D and E. Well, uh, in part D, you're going to find out that the probability that you're ahead is about 46%, 0.4641. In part E, you're going to find out that the probability that you're ahead is about 45%, 0.4522. What lesson does this teach you? Well, this teaches you that the... Uh, there, there's this thing called the gambler's fallacy, right? The gambler's fallacy is that uh, if you keep losing and losing and losing, then you're owed a win, right? You're bound to win at some point in the future. And the lesson that this teaches us is that the gambler's fallacy is a fallacy, right? It's not true, right? Just because you've lost a bunch of times doesn't mean that you're going to suddenly start winning. And in fact, it teaches you that uh, gambling is kind of stupid. <laughs> the the more you play, the less likely you are to be ahead, right? The more you play, the more likely you are to come out a loser. Uh, and that's what the lesson teaches, um, or that's what that's the lesson that we learn. Anyway, so that's all I'll say for part G. Good luck.